Well, hello guys, we, uh, Mathieu and I will introduce you to NCF by uh, showing all the magic that uh, are that, uh, that, uh, behind and uh, how we can share expertise with NCF. So NCF from CLI to a new GUI. So, yes, so first, introduce myself. So I'm Mathieu Serda, I'm a sysadmin. I'm working in the Rudder and NCF team, actually one of uh, NCF's co-creators, John here, and uh, actually a big part of the rest of the Rudder team. Also, I'm a Safe Engine trainer, so giving Safe Engine trainings mostly in Europe, and a machine charmer. <laughs> Where do you get the idea? <laughs> Me, I'm uh, Vincent André, I'm a developer, I mostly do Scala and JavaScript, which, uh, tells, which uh, my team tells me I'm the front-end guy, that's a super title, thanks guy. But, uh, I'm also uh, the release manager on Rudder, so I, I, I could be the changeler guy uh, and, I, uh, build it, and I build the package uh, with, my, uh, with my team, so uh, I take care of the release. Uh, but yeah, we have to talk about NCF and Mathieu will... Uh oh, this is my part. Now, about NCF. First, what is NCF? NCF is a safe engine framework, so it has no real meaning, actually. It can be going from new safe engine framework to notre code function, which means our code works in French. Uh, we have a lot of other explanations, like uh, Nicolas Charles framework, but he's not here anymore, so you're going to hear the joke. <laughs> That's too bad. Basically, it's available on ncf.io. So, basically, this is NCF. Normally, in CF, plain CF engine, have, let's say, quite a lot of complexity to get things working. You have to learn a lot, you have a steep learning curve. What we want to do with NCF is to make CF Engine readily available for people not completely novel knowledgeable in CF Engine, so they can take the time to learn the basics, the internals, and maybe one day do normal CF Engine code. But they can also keep using NCF to make their life easier, of course. Here, in this simple example, I create a bundle in CF Engine, which is called Bundle Agent NTP, which does actually <laughs> install the package, which is NTP, so package install NTP. Here you see the concept of generic methods that we will explain later. Config, which takes a template, ntp.conf, that we will apply on etc ntp.conf to configure the NTP service. If the template has been repaired, then you restart NTP, and you make sure that NTP is always running. So, this is the active part doing normally only one time, and update it sometimes, and this is the part which is verifying that NTP is running always. So, what is NCF on the inside? Actually, it's a tree of, of uh, safe engine files with some layers. First layer is NCF internals. This is where you get the NCF magic. Basically, that is the glue that holds everything together, making NCF able to auto-load CF engine files, auto-construct a bundle sequence, and so on. CFE basics is basically everything which is basic in CF engine, like the CF engine and stdlib, and so on. Gen generic methods. This is what we are going to see later. This is basically the simple units we will use to build <coughs> advanced services. ITOps knowledge is where you store variables, like I know that on Debian, Apache is called Apache 2 in the package, but on CentOS or Red, Hat or Red Hat Linux, it will be called HTTPD. This is where you get these kind of variables. Techniques will enable you to create some let's say, services, simple software stacks, like I want to install Apache 2. This is what you will do in Technics. And services is to create complete software stacks. I want to create, let's say, an Apache 2 bundle with, uh, 
which contains Apache 2 service with PHP and Redis cluster. Okay? That you will, uh, you will see in services. And hooks is to create extension points in NCF. So you can call something when you create a new NCF thing or whatever. So, this is the part we will focus on, which are the real interesting things. First one, generic methods. I will show an example to you later. Again, techniques. It's always a combination of generic methods to create unitary element setups and services to create, as I said, an entire application stack. So, what are the generic methods? A generic method is a simple generic element to do something. Generally, it can be file addition, package installation. If I want to see if a directory is present or not. Just simple things like this. That enables us to do something unitary, small, and do it well. Because you concentrate on one task. And also, you make it reusable. If one day you see that your uh, package installation generic method is broken because, let's say, something is wrong in it, just, just only change the, install, the package installation method. It will be applied everywhere you use it. And logging is automatic. It's given by the generic method. So basically, if you use a package installation generic method and you define the debugging classes when you run safe agent, it will tell you, I'm trying to install a package, and I succeeded in installing a package. This is also a modular logging system. Basically, this is what enables us to use NCF in Rudder and have the, the logging automatically generated for Rudder 2. So, this is an example of generic method, at least the signature as given on the ncf.io website. If you want to use command execution, the only thing you need to know is you will have to call command execution as a method in CF Engine, and you have to give him a command name. So this is a very simple example. If you want to install a package, it will be likely to be package install package name. And what you know is that in return of the execution of this generic method, you will get a class which is command execution, name of the method, the package name, kept, repaired, not okay, and reached. So basically, if the package has been repaired, it will be repaired. If it's already here, it's kept, and so on. So this is plain CF engine logic this time. But it's automatic. So every generic, generic, generic method has at least three parts. First part is the metadata definition. This is what will auto serve to auto-generate auto documentation on the ncf.io website, for example. This is what will be used in the web interface we'll see later to automatically know what we have to put when we use the generic method. And also the classes you get in return. You have the method calls. So basically this is where you will do something inside your generic method. So either you will reuse other generic methods, or for example, if I want to install a package, I can either use a packages generic method, which is, or the packages type in CF Engine, which is normally what you should do. But if you do not know CF Engine very well, you would also use command execution to run apt-get. Not really a good idea. But you can do basically everything you want from plain CF Engine code to other generic method usage. And at the end, a logger call. So basically, this is what will automatically generate reporting. So, to show you how to create a new generic method, we'll take, let's say, not a not so simple example, because I don't want you to just see how we create a generic command execution method, which is basically in CF Engine saying, run a command inside the shell. I will show you a generic method, which is new. We do not have it yet, so. Which will take HTTP, FTP, or something URL, a source, <coughs> to store the content locally. So it will use curl if possible, or wget. Next. First part is the metadata definition. Quite easy, you get the name, 
description, the, all the parameters you can pass with the generic method, which will be used <coughs> as what you should pass to it. Class prefix is the class prefix to be used in it. And also at the end, we define the contract. What class should I define at the end? Then, you get CF engine code. This is the big scary part. Actually, this is, let's say, a quite simple and naive CF engine code bit. First, you define a class prefix to be used everywhere else. You say if curl is present, then I define a class curl binary. Oh no, sorry, excuse me. I first define where the binaries are. Then I define classes if wget is installed and curl installed, which I made a mistake here because I inverted the two. <laughs> Notice, <laughs> I define a class if the file exists because I do not want to overwrite it all the time. I want to only download it if it's not here already. And then I apply methods. So it's quite easy here. I run the download, meaning I execute the command first curl if curl is installed and the file does not exist. If curl is not installed but wget is installed, then I try to run wget to get the file. And if no one is installed and the file does not exist, I just tell, I define a failure class. I cannot do the file download. And also, if the file exists, I define a no-op class. I do not need to download it, because it's already here. And at the end, I define my magic logger to tell, uh, tell something like this, download file target is repaired or is kept, and the class prefix. Class prefix. So, this is self engine code, right? Um, you need to create a logging system in self engine, normal self engine code. We created this logger generic method to take care of it. But now we have a generic method, we are having a problem. I'm very knowledgeable in self engine. As I said, I'm a self engine trainer. But I'm working with people which are not as knowledgeable as me, which makes a problem. What if I want to make this file download method available to someone which is not really knowledgeable in Ceph Engine, but I want him to be able to use my work anyway, without having to type uh, generic methods, uh, create bundle sequences, and so on. Well, this is where we have NCF Builder. It happens that I'm uh, less self engine knowledgeable than people, so I can talk to you about this. Uh, with self and with the NCF, uh, self engine experts like Mathieu can share the, their knowledge. They can and uh, and they can uh, express what they uh, what they what they want to do, and uh, so uh, they can focus on more complex complex tasks because uh, their colleague can. Then configure the, uh, the the infrastructure, but uh, that knowledge is not accessible in the first place because you have to write a little self engine code. It's only used under and method, so it's not complicated. But yet you still have to to know a few things. Uh, another problem is uh, when you are typing your self engine file, you don't have a full overview of what you are. Creating, so you don't know all the generic methods, you don't know if someone has already uh, created a technique to do that, uh, so you don't, you don't uh, have a full overview. Basically, uh, we don't need to know CF Engine very well, but you need to know CLI at least, <coughs> because you would have to search. You can search on the website, on CF website, but also you can just do a grep inside your local directories. But this is not something I can expe expect anyone to just be able to do. And uh, to configure a policy, it's maybe not very uh, user-friendly. So uh, I think it's better to, uh, to, uh, to use a web interface to just mm -hmm. enter some parameters or uh, just, uh, just to configure. So uh, at Normation, we build uh, a solution that's NCF Builder. It's, uh, 
it's a web interface that uh, is put on NTF. Uh, it's quite young. It was started in April uh, 2000, <coughs> the first year. Uh, its main goal is to build promises without writing any CSG code. So experts and novice can can do uh, can use it uh, alike. Uh, you can focus on <coughs> configuring your infrastructure. You don't have to think about uh, what I need to write. Uh, and you have that full overview about what you have and what you want to do, what you can do. So, uh, so as I said, I'm a less knowledgeable people in, uh, in uh, CS Engine. So, uh, but I want to deploy plug XML on on, uh, on my server. Plug XML, it's a lightweight blog CMS tool. It's a very it's a easy to deploy, but I I want to automate it with CF Engine and ensure it's uh, deployed over time. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know how to do that. So basically, we want to deploy a simple PHP application with no real dependency. It has no m database dependency and so on. So. Basically, what I want is Vincent to be able to do it without having me putting my hands on the keyboard. He, will, he just knows he needs to get XML, zip file from the website, deploy it on machine, install a PHP aware web server, and unzip everything and set permission. Yeah, I could do it with shell script. I, I know how to do that, but set engine uh, may be rather complicated for me. So, with NCF Builder, I can create a technique that will do all the steps for me. Uh, and, uh, just only enter the commands, uh, the permissions on the, fi on the file. Just uh, very easy. And then I will apply it with CF Engine, and uh, we will have a new blog and uh, we'll enjoy it a lot. So, now we have to make you a demo about, uh, about this. So <coughs> here's NCF Builder. So uh, in the in the in the first place, you have on the left a list of all techniques available. So it's a uh, fresh install. We have uh, only three uh, three techniques that have been created, and uh, we want to create a new one to deploy XML. So click on it, and a new form appears to uh, to to declare what I, what I want. So uh, just put a name. I want to name it deploy plug XML. Can add a small description so uh, anyone can understand what it's doing. So uh, yes, uh, and uh, but yet it's doing nothing. We have to add method that will be applied. Uh, by the technique. Uh, so on the we have a, a button to add method. On the right you will have a list of all the available methods. You can uh, you can understand what they are doing. Uh, there's a link to uh, the website to have a full uh, documentation about it. So you can you know what you can do in one in one look. So uh, first thing I want to do is to install the the uh, a package uh, that is a dependency of uh, plug XML. It's a plugin for Ap Apache. It's a lib Apache lib lib mod PHP five. Apache two dot mod PHP five. Do not care about uh, installing <laughs> Apache two because it would be installed as a dependency of the module. No problem with that. So here's the first thing that uh, my technique will do. It will install that package. Then of course, we are assuming we run on Debian or Debian-like systems here. It could also add a condition to tell, I only want to do this on Debian, and I want to, do, to install uh, HTTPD on Red Hat-like systems, for example. Yes, so we, are there. we can apply conditions. We, I will show you later, because we will need them. Uh, <coughs> uh, after we have installed that package, we need to restart Apache 2 because uh, um, uh, it will not take the, 
the plugin uh, in uh, mistake. So if we, we just add the service restart generic method and add only just the name of the service to restart. So add patchy. So you see, automatically, when you are create, uh, creating a new generic method here to install Apache 2, it will give you the classes you can expect in return from the execu execution of this. Because I don't want to that Apache 2 to be restarted every time the, the, the police will be uh, applied. I need to uh, put a condition over that, uh, that generic method. So in uh, the configuration, we have uh, <coughs> that small tab condition. It's here you can enter self engine classes. Uh, here I just put my package install libapage2 uh, prepared. And when that class will be up, I will run the CFL service restart uh, generic method. I also could have, on a, we had a operating system static classes, so you don't have, to, if you want to run on Debian, you can just add uh, the condition Linux and Debian. So it will automatically apply that, uh, that class context here, Debian, and package install return. Then after that, we uh, will use the uh, next step for my, uh, the generic method Mathieu has just made, so five mm -hmm. on It was too bad you could not download anything before, but now you can. So I need my cheat sheet like, <laughs> to get the URL. Okay, so kind of where the URL, but let's call it in TMP. Up and I store it in TMP. Uh, and I will it. <coughs> so it will download the file and put it in that place. Uh, since Mathieu has already done it, uh, done it, it will only download once if the file exists. So yep. cool. Uh, after that, I need to. Uh, let me check. I need to unzip that zip because it won't be uh, it won't do anything yet. So I need a long command yet. Uh, and uh, here we are. Look, a uh, command uh, like Mathieu showed you before. It's very easy. You just put the command you will use. You have to put the full uh, full pass to. Uh, tools and it will uh, extract our, uh, our, package. <coughs> our package so uh, <coughs> but I don't want to extract every time my uh, my fields you know it will be uh, repaired every time because the command can be uh, if he has no condition it will run every time so yet I still need to add a new generic method uh, mm -hmm. we want to check if the directory slash slash var slash tw slash xml exists and if that directory exists I won't uh, extract the zip so uh, I need to reorder my, my generic method because it will be run in uh, <coughs> order so here I just put on slash var slash xml and I get my Class is success because I don't want to run <coughs> if it's a success. So here I put not mm -hmm. and could be unless in uh, CSG 3.7, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, once the command uh, has been done, it, it, we only miss one thing. We want to have permissions so uh, so uh, W data can. Uh, can run the, uh, the PHP uh, code. So, here we have a permission recursive which will apply recursively on the, on the path I will enter the permission I had to, uh, I had to the generic method. So it's been slash 
And remember, teach mode 777 equals death. Yeah, so we will only... 775. 775. In this case. It would be better, but... And we for the owner. And we group. You know, DevOps friendliness. Yes. <laughs> cool. So, here we've got... Uh, our technique is complete. So we install the dependency and we... Uh, and we uh, deploy our FlexML. So basically, in this case, we could have a procedure saying, let's say I gave Vincent a paper saying, I need you to install PHP, download the package, unzip it on the machine on a very specific directory, and apply permissions on it. And you could just apply this procedure very easily without having to write a single CF engine piece of code. Just have to go click, 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 click. Yep. I save. Save. Oh, the technique exists now in the list on the left. It has been added in the in the library in the path. So on my on my node, there is no uh, file here. That's uh, the method. I, I wrote it myself. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a builder that wrote it. I, I can do some sample engine with it. It's uh, very cool. So you can see all the if bar classes. It will be better with if. So you're not knowledgeable in self engine, eh? Uh, yeah, I know. I can use MCF Builder <laughs> instead. It would be best. So I just need to modify uh, my self, the, the base service to use FlexML, and I will run self agent, and it will uh, it will install FlexML. Show you show Apache first. Yeah. <laughs> Before here's uh, where my uh, site will be uh, deployed. <coughs> Not found. Doesn't work. So self agent PHP. So it installs packages. Install PHP five and download packages in curl. And apply uh, permission. So yeah. here you see at the the two lines at the end. On, uh, I finished the application of the baseline service on CF Engine three six four on host node one. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Ta da! We have a person as well inside. And it's it still everywhere. <laughs> What? Root, root. Almost. Admin, admin. <laughs> yeah, it's a very high security uh, blog. So, uh, Let's say it's an internal service. <coughs> uh, and I type different. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, my blog is online. Yeah. Uh, so. Oop. So what is the two? Let's say. Four minutes? So it works. Service. We have uh, a full block deployed. I haven't found any self engine line. Uh, Mathieu could have done everything, uh, could have, could, could, uh, could have done uh, some complex things like uh, printer uh, setup, which, which uh, never works. <laughs> well, actually, I, on, uh, I think self engine would be quicker than me on this one. <laughs> Just have the time to type. So. And CF, we already have 60, 66 generation attacks. 67 now. And in the near future of 67, we have to add tests on it to check the, if it works well. But I, we just saw a bug in it. <laughs> uh, we plan to add uh, new methods, principally user management, because it's, because it's uh, quite complicated. And if, it, if there is an abstract over that, it uh, could be good. Uh, actually, technique can, cannot be parametrized, and uh, we want to add some parameters so it can be used on several places, or just to change the port of uh, your service, uh, change uh, whatever you want. Uh, in the same place, we want a better integration for NCF Builder with ops, ops knowledge, that uh, folder uh, Mathieu presented you with. Uh, you put uh, bar, the interesting Which means basically, bar. if you wanted to install Apache 2, you would just say, I want to install the Apache 2 package. 
just I don't want to know how it's called on SUSE, uh, <laughs> Red Hat, or so on. And it will automatically complete depending on the OS you are running on. So NCF and NCF Builder are already integrated with, with Rudder since 2.11. Mm -hmm. So you can use it in order <coughs> to, uh, to create your techniques, easy with, with the NCF Builder, apply, apply them to nodes via Rudder, and check their compliance over time with, within Rudder. And uh, so it's very easy to use, and it's, uh, it changed uh, quite a lot how we create techniques in, uh, in Rudder. And uh, it can be integrated via two other tools via NCF hooks that you, uh, that you uh, show you uh, a little glimpse of that in the, in in the directory tree. So uh, that's all for now. Do you have uh, any questions? Uh, yeah. Um, maybe I uh, just didn't quite catch it, but can you repeat? The difference between the NCF method and the uh, technique? Alors, NCF uh, generic methods are simple use, uh, use case that uh, create a file, that uh, install a package. It has no uh, business intelligence in it. It's uh, do something. Mm. Techniques are more business, so if, if you want uh, a technique like uh, default to XML, you need some several bricks in it, in, in the generic method. So uh, techniques are uh, where you want to configure your infrastructure. Okay. And uh, to make it simple, you use generic methods to build techniques. You're using okay. small bricks to create at the end so building. Techniques are more about use cases. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. For in this case, you have a technique to, cre to, cre to install a bricks ML installation, mm -hmm. which is using generic methods to create to install the file, install uh, packages, download it, mm. and zip it and apply permissions. Mm. Yep. To when you save a new technique, it uh, to be a new version, a new file, so you don't mm -hmm. uh, lose everything. And you can for now, it's not done. It's always version 1.0, yeah. but uh, it will be integrated in another file, and next uh, you can have several versions of the technique in the power. In power. It's uh, it's uh, it's in, in, in the it's in the roadmap. Uh, And actually, uh, I saw a most <coughs> welcome improvement in uh, the upcoming Set Engine uh, 3.7 with the uh, more simple uh, method call. Mm. You just put a method name and not <laughs> left hand side and right hand side. Mm. I think it will make actually our techniques much, much cleaner now. Mm. Because we, we use the left hand side, which is normally not useful in the case of methods, to describe what will be done in this method call. But in CF engine or in NCF, the generic methods normally have a, na a name which is explanatory enough. So you don't really need that. Mm. This uh, resembles a lot the procedural model. But, uh, in the end, that's what you do with uh, bundles, with sequences of bundles, uh, anyway. So it might as well uh, show like that, you know, command, semicolon, command, semicolon, it resembles a lot, but if that's what you do in the end, then... Yeah, well, that, that's, that's a little trade-off between the, uh, let's say, uh, purely decorative approach of CF Engine and the procedural approach normal people not really knowledgeable in CF Engine are used to meet mm. in the tools. Of course, it means some trade-offs like uh, chilling in the feet of a re-entrance sometimes. 
This is where we have to add conditions to tell, I do not want to download the package if the directory is not here, or something like that. But it makes things much more easier for person not really knowledgeable in safe engine to understand. And this is the objecti objectives here. We want people to naturally be able to use NCF without having the concept of reentrance or something like that, which are normally teach to, let's say, developers or sysadmins, but people less knowledgeable do not have it. They know, well, I have a, a sheet of paper, I have applied things in order and it works. And we try to handle the best we can the magic behind saying, okay, the package is already here, do not install it anymore. It's given by Safe Engine, we use this. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I have a <laughs> one more question. <laughs> so I'm a bit uh, off topic, just uh, for, for, the, for the style, because this uh, sometimes have been a, has been an internal debate. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, why are you uh, are you preferring uh, if bar class to the class statement? Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> because there, there have been the discussion, some people uh, want to keep both ways, uh, some people, including me, want to have the only real true way. And uh, Well, actually, uh, I like to use both. I don't have any real preference. I think only only, any, only thing is that normally the language should tell me which one to use. But there is a small difference. If our class enables us to use uh, variables in the classes we use, if you use simple class definition with two columns, yeah. it does not work. Yeah. So in this case, we took the safe approach saying maybe you will have variables in the class definitions, so just use if our class just in case. Mm -hmm. And always use it because it makes it much more consistent to read. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, makes sense. If our class was very simple, you could use Faria as a smart class. Yeah, but uh, if you need one, uh, a variable, then you break.